So, welcome to another book review. Today we're gonna move, we're gonna review an all-time classic, which is called Card Shark by Darwin Ortiz. And Darwin Ortiz has been one of the uh, biggest figures in magic, and this is one of his most notable books, alongside Strong Magic and uh, Lessons in, in Card Card Mastery. The book is about 190 pages long. It is hardcover book. This is how it, it looks like without the dust jacket. It is separated into three main chapters. The first chapter includes impromptu miracles. Uh, the second one includes uh, presentational show pieces. And the third one includes dumpling routines. So let's tackle one by one. The first chapter, Prompt and Miracles. Is, uh, is a chapter where it's not, you wouldn't call it a magician fuller, but each trick that I have tried from here is built to, to, to make a great audience reaction, such as the signature effect is another one. Basically what the tri the, this trick is, you give the deck to the spectator to shuffle, and the spectator freely selects any card. You tell the spectator we are not going to see the card, but in order to recognize it later on, I want you to sign the back of it. And uh, the card is shuffled into the deck, and I turn my attention to another spectator and I ask him to pick a card, uh, face up this time. I also ask if, he, if they want to change their mind. Keep in mind that both cards are uh, free selections, there is no forcing, and now we are going to reveal what the signed card was. And it, as it happens, it was a card that was selected. At this point I say that it's not that you chose the card that was signed. The signature jumps to the card you choose. And as you can see now I have the two. And turn the back, the signature jumps on the two and is no longer in the back of the first selection. Then we have a transposition effect. Four kings are transposing into one card, the spectator selection. There is also the trick called beyond sleight of hand, which is a, a great effect. It does require sleight of hand, which is a sandwich effect. What I like about this trick is that you spread the deck, two face-up jacks are seen in there without anything in between them, and just by the way, will wave of the hand without doing anything else, a card materializes. And I love the word uh, materializes that he uses. What I like about this entire chapter, the impromptu miracles, is that Darwin, in every trick, first you will get a bit of the story, then he will briefly describe the effect, and then the method. Uh, at the end, it gives you performance tips. And this is what I like about this sandwich effect. Within the performance tips, uh, it gives you all the tips you need to know to make the trick more impactful and some keywords here and there and what to avoid, of course. And I really like the word materialize in this effect. It gives it, it, gives it an, a whole different uh, realm of uh, magic. Then we have Nulda's Revenge which is a transposition, a card to pocket transposition with a card with outside. Both of them are signed. Great effect as well. And keep in mind that those are not really magician fullers, but the pocket punch. All of the tricks uh, in this chapter. So now we have the six and the four signed uh, in order to prove that we have, uh, we have no duplicate cards, which is true. There are no duplicate cards here. And I'm holding the four in my hand if I reach into my pocket. We have also a very, the very famous Hitchco Hitchcock Aces. Hitchcock, I guess, right? Yeah, Hitchcock Aces. But basically, uh, like a McDonald's Aces, which Darwin does in his own way. Okay, and then we have a weird name, Karten Kunst. <laughs> I don't know what that means. But as a selection, the spectator chooses a card. Uh, the card is uh, put under the spectator's hand for uh, uh, for security. Okay, so yeah, the card is placed under the spectator's hand, and uh, you have four queens. You show them that they are all face up. You wave the queens, and one of them turns face down. This queen will be 
uh, will match the color of the card that the spectator has chosen, which brings a nice surprise. But later on, when they see the face down queen, it has become their card, and what they hold uh, below their hand is actually the queen. Okay, so let's move to part two, the presentational show pieces. Uh, here we have tricks that uh, are not impromptu most of the times. They require either a, a special wallet, maybe um, special cards, a lot of setup. So these are big routines, okay, that you're gonna use for a show. We have, for example, pick up on South Street which is a card that disappears from the spectator's wallet okay and it appears in the magician's wallet you see, you see as you can see there is a unique uh, trick here I don't think I have ever seen that before of course everything just so you know it's credited whatever you see in uh, Darwin's books you will see uh, where he has taken the trick from or the inspiration or some slides and Next one we have in the presentation of show pieces, we have the marker. The marker is an effect it's with a sign card, which is a selected sign card, which is torn in four small pieces. And each piece is uh, signed or has a specific uh, design. So it's a very, very, very unique torn and stored card effect. So presentation of show pieces, it's not really uh, a very, very big, very big chapter. It has a lot of tricks that could be used in a professional setting. In comparison to the um, impromptu miracles, which can be used in any setting. Uh, I think the impromptu miracles can be just as powerful as the show, as the show pieces here. Then the last chapter is called the gambling routines, which is mostly the reason that I buy these books, but they never disappoint. From page one all the way to the last page, they never disappoint. So the gambling routines um, have a lot of fun presentations regarding regarding gambling. We I, I will uh, mention one of the one of the tricks here. The one-handed poker deal is a very nice uh, trick. Remember that we have the jack of spades on top of the deck. So here's a one hand second deal just as I would do it in a game if you were to ask me for another card because you can see that's not the jack of spades, that's not the jack of spades, that's not it, that's not it, that's not it. And I'll try and slow it down a little bit for you. I can't do it too much more slowly than this. And you can see the jack of spades is there. You know it's there but it's not there because it's still there. Um, that show, it's simply a showcase of skill and it's very nice when you want to hop from one trick to another. It's a very, very short um, show off of skill. So a lot of, of one-handed cuts and shuffles. Then we... Okay, so this trick, what we're basically doing is we're, we're shuffling the deck. The deck can actually be shuffled by a spectator. And we're gonna take five random selections. So this trick is uh, very good for a group of people instead of one person. So you, you shuffle the deck, giving them some time to rem memorize the cards. We have the jack of spades, the queen of uh, sorry clubs, the queen of clubs, the five of clubs, nine of diamonds, and the three of clubs. So we're gonna take each one each card separately and uh, put them in different parts in the deck. So I ask the chosen cards to be. Uh, returned back to me from the spectators and you're gonna see what happens in um, as we proceed so what I'm basically gonna do is with one cut and two very fair shuffles I'm going to stack the cards uh, all for myself in a four in a five-handed poker game for four players the fourth player which will be me will take all the selected cards and then I proceed to uh, demonstrate that skill so we just completed the second card and I'm going to deal, deal them off really cleanly from the top because uh, I'm not bottom or second dealing on anything and, you ha and we have the three of clubs which was one of the selections, the nine of diamonds I think it was a, yeah, the five of clubs and there was a queen of clubs and a jack of clubs coming up 
So that's basically it, uh, and I stop the applause or the gasp and I say, you know what, you should never trust a cheater because... And I just let this play out, so such a good trick. And from the cellar, another amazing gambling, gambling routine. Okay, that, uh, th this one is another very, very cool uh, uh, gambling demonstration. Uh, in which you need uh, the four aces, so you can demonstrate how a cheater can use the bottom deal to um, to deal, you know, uh, all the aces to himself. So uh, let's take all the aces. Uh, which one is the ace of hearts? All right. So check this out. First of all, we we're gonna gather up the aces. Okay, make sure that everybody sees that. All the aces are in my hand and all of them one by one will go to the bottom and I'm gonna bottom deal them to the fifth player keep an eye on the fifth player I'm gonna go really slow on the fifth player so you can see the bottom deal happening here see I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going N now now this time I'm gonna go fast check you see it's not really that uh, visible when you go fast and one more time slowly, so you can clearly clearly see that I'm... Oops, no I'm not! <laughs> That's why I love this trick. Perhaps the most famous trick in the book, the Sting, which is an effect that the performer will deal four aces to himself, okay, after a shuffle, and then he will deal the four queens to another player, four kings to another, and four aces to himself. And this is all done when the, uh, while the deck has been shuffled by the spectator. Okay, so that pretty much uh, wraps the review. Uh, what I want you to take away from this book, this is of course an advanced book. Um, the last chapter is uh, where where the gambling routines are coming uh, is the hardest uh, chapter of the book. I will call it advanced plus uh, difficulty because you will see one hundred second deals, uh, sender deals, uh, riffle stacking, uh, riffle stacking with a sorrow shuffle and a lot, a lot, a lot of difficult techniques. Then uh, the other chapter, the central one, is simply kind of advanced because it has uh, a lot of palmings, uh, mercury falls, fall shuffling, pharaoh shuffling. And the easier one would be the impromptu miracles, uh, which is still not high, high upper intermediate. So the whole, the whole book is advanced. You definitely need the table. And every trick in the book revolves around uh, a pr the presentation, presentation, fuck, presenta presentational uh, type, which can cheat at cards. That's uh, which, of course, you don't need to present them the way he t talks uh, about here. But there are some really, really good key points that he makes in every trick that I believe that you definitely should should follow. Of course, uh, you should accommodate those to your character and the type of style you are performing. Uh, so, that's pretty much it. Thank you for watching and I uh, hope to see you here in my next book review.